Okay, how you doing? We're going to talk about uh, multiplying radicals in uh, my first video. I talked about simplifying and I talked about multiplying uh, radicals using just the distributive property of like uh, example A here, where I had some root on the outside that I was distributing through. Uh, now in this video, I'm essentially going to talk about what happens now if I have a quantity times a quantity. So some people are very familiar with this being called the FOIL method. I don't like to call it the FOIL method because why well, remember uh, something that works for only one thing and one thing only, and that's a binomial times a binomial, and there's no other thing FOIL is used for besides that. So I think it's a cheap trick to try to get kids to learn um, something, and I, I don't, um, I, I just like to use distributive property. So here we go. So again, distributive property. So in this case, what I want you to know is yes, I'm using the same type of thing as A plus B. But in this property here, what I want you to note is that my a plus b is very similar to what my x is. And what I just simply do is I distribute that quantity. So what you look at over here is that you'll see some similar similarities. So this a and b both has an x like this, yes? And then this one over here has the same type of deal. Um, so for this particular one, I'm just distributing it. Uh, so this A plus B, what I want you to note is that C and D both have this. So again, it's the distributive property. And then what you would do from here is that you can take each one of these and apply this to it and you'll get to here. The FOIL method just kind of doesn't teach you that this is still the distributive property. The FOIL method kind of just takes you from here directly to here, which, okay, um, which is fine, but I'm just a fan of keeping it what it's called. And it's, it's the distributive property. Um, and it comes in handy when you get into higher order mathematics to know that this applies. So, what I want to talk about here is multiplying radicals. Um, and the FOIL method, uh, again, you can use, not a problem. Uh, you just have to know that this is what's applying. Uh, so, A is multiplying both C and D. B is both, both multiplying both C and D as well. And you can see that here with this right here, okay? Um, so we're just going to utilize that property here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use it just much like the distributive property where I'm going to take this entire quantity and I'm going to distribute it to the 4 and I'm going to write it that way. So then this becomes 4 times the quantity of 2 plus root 3. Okay, and I like to do this again because I just think it makes things less complicated in looking at it. And you'll understand as I make these progressively harder what I mean by that. So then I'm adding in between here. So I'm adding and I'm just going to distribute this entire quantity to this root 2. So what I'm left with is root 2 times 2 plus root 3. And then I'm just going to look at them individually and complete them. So here we go. So 4 times 2 is easy, that's 8. Okay. And then I do 4 times root 3, and that's nice because that's just plus 4 root 3. And then I go on to the next one. So what is 2 root 2 times 2? Well, that's 2 root 2, so plus 2 root 2. And then the last thing I do, I'm going to use my multiplication property that I talked about in last video. And again, I'll write that up over here very quickly for you. But the multiplication property states... Okay, so I'm just going to multiply mul prop here. States that if I have the square root of A times the square root of B, that is equivalent to root A times B. So that's what I'm going to apply here because I'm worried about doing the distributive property. So I'm actually trying to do A multiplication as opposed to break apart a factor. So this just becomes plus 2 times 3 is root 6. Now I come back and look at all of these and I go, okay, remember... Okay, then it must be left in simplest form, i.e. any factor that is a root of the index must be removed from the radicand. So, 3. There is no square number that goes in, that divides into 3. 2. There is no square number that 2 can be divided by. And 6. There is no other square number that 6 can be divided by. So all of these roots are in their simplest form. Therefore, none of these roots can be combined because to combine a root through addition, you would have to have the root being the same, and therefore you could then add what their multipliers are. So we can think of those as coefficients, much like x, 2x plus 2x is 4x. So this is my final answer. Well, not pretty, but it applied the multiplication property. 
And again, I like to use the distributive property method where you take this quantity and you distribute it. It is a value, so I can distribute that whole quantity. And that's what I've done here. And again, I just think it made it much neater to, to look at, or much simpler to look at, not neater. So on to another example. So the next example I have for you, like I said, I would make these uh, progressively a tad bit harder, which basically means I'm just going to add a couple more roots, or I'm going to add roots that you can then simplify at the end. So here we go. So I'm going to take 5 plus root 6, and I'm going to multiply that by 4 plus root 12. Okay? So again, I like to use the distributive method property, where I like to go from here to this, because I think it makes it look neater or cleaner to look at for radicals. So here we go. I take this entire quantity and I distribute it to the 4, so it's 4 times 5 plus root 6. Yes, it's an extra step, but it's much nicer and cleaner to look at so you don't make a mistake. Then I add, so I bring down this addition, which is adding, so this root 12, and I'm going to multiply that by 5 plus this root 6. And then I'm going to go ahead and work with it. So now I just apply the distributive property like up in A here. So 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times root 6 is plus 4 root 6. Plus, well, root, five, root 12 times 5 is 5 root 12. And then the last part here, remember like I talked about before, that if there is a similar, a similar factor that you share in common with these two, I like to, to think of that as writing it out. And in this case, yes, 6 is a factor of 12. So what I have here is I'll have a root 6 times a root 6, which is a root 36, which is 6. And what am I left with in here? So I'm going to think of this as really being 6 times 2. Okay, so you can see that. I'm kind of like writing that small, yet small enough as work. So I have root 6 times root 6. Root 36 is 6. So I bring a plus 6 over here. And what I'm left with is this root 2. So I hope you understand my work and uh, how I'm thinking about the process of it. But then again, I look at this final an the, this answer I've created, which is 20 plus 4 root 6 plus 5 root 12 plus 6 root 2. And then that's my final answer. Because 6, there is no square number that 6 is divisible by. 12. Is that done? Yes or no? Well, in this case, no, it's not done. So we have to simplify this last step. So what... Uh, square number can 12 to be divisible by and in this case we find that 12 can be divisible by 4 so it's 4 times 3 so the square root of 4 is 2 so I'm just going to write my work back out here 2 plus 4 root 6 yes and then I'm left with out here that this is a 2 2 times a 5 because this is root 4 times root 3 correct so root 12 is root 4 times root 3 which is 2 so 5 times 2 is 10, I'm left with a root 3, and then I add to it this 6 root 2. And then there's my final answer. And again, I'm really just bumping these up a level each time. Could I have simplified this right off the get-go? Absolutely. I just chose not to because most people will just go through and do it. And again, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I realized I didn't do it in the beginning. I caught my mistake down here at the bottom here, and that's fine. You just have to realize you got to fix it somewhere along the way with these roots. So the final answer to this one is 20 plus 4 root 6 plus 10 root 3 plus 6 root 2. And again, there's no more that I can do. Again, always check that is there any factor of this radicand, okay, that can be written as a square number. So yes, 4 was that one for this case. So I hope you're starting to see um, what I'm doing here. So on to another one. Let's make it a little bit more complicated. And the only way I can really make it more a little bit more complicated is just simply adding more roots in. So here we go. So now I'm just going to make everything a root. So I have this root 4, okay, plus this root 3, and I'm going to multiply it by this root 5 minus root 12. So again, we have this root 12 in here that we just realized, so I'm going to go ahead and break this one apart. So this one is root 4 times root 3, okay? So what we have here is I'm just going to rewrite this step down here as being the square root of 4 plus root 3 times root 5 
minus, so in this case, what is the square root of 4? It's 2, so I get minus 2 root 3. And does it make it easier? Sure, in this case it will. So here we go. Let's just apply the property. So let's apply the distributive property. So let's take this entire quantity and distribute it to the root 5 and then distribute it to the negative 2 root 3. So here we go. I get root 5 times root 4 plus root 3. Okay? Subtracting this 2 root 3. Okay? Times that by this quantity, which is going to be... So let me remove my multiplication property here which is going to be this root 4 plus root 3. And again, like I said, sure it's an extra step, but at the end of the day it might make things simpler and neater for you, and you'll know that you've multiplied everything you need to multiply. So, up here, I caught something else that I did silly. Root 4 is just 2. Haha. -ha. So this right here, I'm just going to erase it and write it as a 2. So root 4 is no other than 2. And this is a 2. Okay, so I've caught my mistake, and there we go. So let's continue on with this. So root 5 times 2 is 2 root 5. Plus, now we take the multiplication property, a root times a root with the same index, which means that these roots out here are the same number. In this case, I'm dealing with square roots today, so we don't have to worry about it. So 5 times 3, there are no common factors in them, so I just multiply them, and I get root 15. Then I go over here, and I distribute this negative 2 in. Remember it's a negative 2. Common mistake a lot of people forget is the negative. So I multiply it in, and I get negative 4 root 3. And then we come over to here, we distribute this in back over, which is negative 2. Now root 3 times root 3, important to understand that, is root 9. Root 9 is just simply 3, so I'm just going to write this as negative 2 times 3. Okay? So here we go. 5, no square numbers. So this is 2 root 5 plus, again, root 15, nope, minus 4 root 3, and then this is just minus 6. And there you have it. I'm done. And, you know, the, the more roots you add, the more steps or levels it kind of takes. Um, but again, it's just uh, step by step by step. I'm not trying to rush through it. I'm just doing everything step by step by step to make sure I'm doing it right. So I hope you see that this is my final answer and how I've come to it. And for my last final example of this one, I will do one more. So again, every time I'm just keeping basic principles in my head, which is that multiplication principle, and I'm just using the distributive property as I know it. So the last one I have here for you today is 3 root 2 uh, plus... 4 root 5, and I'm going to multiply this by root 6 um, minus 2 root 10. So here's my two uh, binomials, well, not binomials in this case, but here's my two values that I'm multiplying together. So again, I like to utilize uh, the distributive property where I take this entire quantity and I show it as a multiplication of this, root 6. So I, now I have root 6, okay? times the quantity of 3 root 2 plus 4 root 5. And then I have the negative 2 root 10, and I'm going to distribute this to that as well. So I write this up where I have 3 root 2 plus 4 root 5. And then I go ahead and do my multiplications. So, again, I like to look at my roots like I said. Let's look at the outsides first. 3 and 1 makes 3. But now let's look at my roots and say, okay, I'm doing 6 times 2. Well, two has a fact, uh, 6 has a factor of 2 in it, so I really have, again, that this is really like root 3 times root 2. Well, root 2 times root 2, any time you take something and multiply it by itself, it's going to give you that 2. So this is really 3 times 2, and then root 3. Okay? So, moving on to the next one. So I can simplify this 3 times 2. You'll be able to start to do these a little bit quicker. But this becomes 6 root 3. Okay? So going on to the next one, outside times this one is positive 4. So now root 6 and root 5. This is root 3 and root 2. Those are its factors. It doesn't share any common. So in this case, I'm now just going to do the 6 times the 5, which is root 3rd. Okay? 
So on to the next one, now I come to here. So I don't just write minus, I get my sign after I do my distributive property. But what I notice here, again, is I'm going to take a look at the beginning here, the outsides, multiply them together, which is negative 6. Okay? So negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Now look at my roots. Does 10 have a common factor okay, of 2? Well, sure it does, and that common factor is 2. So this is really root 2 times root 5. So again, I can multiply by 2. So this is really negative 6 times 2. Okay, so I'll show that. And then I'm left with that root 5. Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. So this can be written as minus 12 root 5. And then I go on to the next one. Well, in this case, my work that I already have is going to be nice for me because I have a root 5 and a root 5. But again, I'm always going to do this negative times this, which is negative 8. And I'm going to notice here that I have root 5 root 5. So this is just times 5. And I'm left with root 2. So what I have here is negative 8 times 5, which is negative 40. And there you have it. I'm done. So I've got nothing left. 3 can't be divisible by a square number. 30 can't be divisible by a square number. 5 nor can 2. And none of these are the same, so I can't combine them. And there you have the final answer for this one. While not pretty, nor is it not nice, but the work that I've done here only took me a couple steps. And what you notice is I started to not, you know, kind of cheat a little bit or skip a couple of steps because I just want you to see how you could possibly do that as well. So I hope that helps with uh, any type of work that you're doing.